Welcome guys, Dave from Ohm Healing. Coming to you live from the LA Cannabis Cup, here with my friend, Addison DeMora from Steep Hill Labs. And you know, we promised you guys a story and a lot of things have been going around and we had, uh, one of the topics we had coming up on our channel has to do with, can dabs, can concentrates really be safe? Now, this is the man to talk to, guys, and this is the person you wanna to listen to because in this industry, Steep Hill Labs are leading the way as far as science and some of the first people to get some of the technology that you have now. So I guess to start off, could you do a little separate fact from fiction regarding, you know, what is really safe and what people need to watch out for? And then we'll kind of go into, you know, how to get tested and when and what. I, th I think it's more about what you can do to make sure things are safe. And it comes down to uh, first you know, testing stuff to, to see if there are trace residuals and any of the types of hydrocarbon solvents that might have been used uh, in making it. And then you kind of start from there. So as long as you can, you can send samples or only make sure that you're uh, consuming stuff that is tested. That's probably the first step. Right. How do you see, like right now, I mean, you guys are leading the way with the science. What do you see as far as, as we go legal, as states just keep popping off, how do you see the awareness spreading and how do you see what you're doing leading as thought leaders when we've got, you know, the media going, oh, dabs are so bad, you know, that whole thing. So how, as we go legal, do you guys bring this to light and say, nah, in fact, here's what it is and here's why you should use us and not kind of... I think the, the first way that we do it is by consulting the states that are legal. So we've been doing that with Washington and Colorado. Uh, not as much Colorado, but in Washington now with uh, Nevada's medical program. And Washington, uh, California. California is going in, in that direction, looking to create regulations. So we're getting involved in that. Um, and then just doing that as much as possible and, and trying to help lead uh, public officials in the right direction. Because we've, we've tested a lot of stuff. We have the data from all the tests that we've done. We're testing stuff that patients are consuming every day and in random places all over the state. So when you take that data back to a place like uh, Illinois, and you explain that to them, they, it's very valuable to them. You can help them understand what type of testing they need to be there. And then for us, uh, we then uh, plan on going into those states and working with those right. with the officials there and everything else to make sure the stuff is tested. As well. Right. And what's your opinion on you know dispensary or collective? They get a bunch of product, and I've seen a lot of people send it away and only get THC tests and then put on weed maps. Oh yeah, we're we're lab tested. What's your opinion on that and, and pesticides, fungicides, all the other stuff and all the other chemicals? Well, our, our opinion is that we, we push real heavy and try to educate as much as possible and get patients educated so they can demand and ask for more and ask and create that accountability. And then what typically happens is the dispensaries step up to it and they, you know, if, if the patients go into a dispensary and say, hey, look, you're only potent to this, and what about trace residual, what about mold testing? The dispensaries typically will, will start to go in that direction and do it. So it's really about the patients pushing for it. Um, we try to make it available for the lab for the dispensaries to use, for the growers to use, for the patients to use. And then it's just word of mouth. And people saying, hey, look, I'm not, I'm going to buy here because they test, and I'm not going to buy there because they don't. And that's really what the market kind of pushes in that direction. Awesome. So two more things. One, as far as butane, I know I watched you speak yesterday, and I learned something to where, uh, you know, you were saying that the parts per million of taking a, a lighter and just you know hitting something, you're getting more butane in than if you have a torch and a dab. Is that was that true? Did I hear that right? If, if the product's screened, you've tested it for trace residuals and it's passed, uh, say in the state of Washington, at 500 parts per million. You're about 300 to uh, 500 parts per million below because a, a flick of a lighter is supposed to be 800 to 1200 parts per million, depending on how, or, or lighting a bowl, depending on how long what you're pulling. And if and people have been doing that for a long, long time, the point I made was if a gram of cannabis or concentrates has been tested and it's below 500 parts per million, there's less of that residual yeah. product in there than one yeah, single yeah. light of a lighter. So a lot of people complain about it, but they don't realize it or look at it in those terms. Right, so if people are looking to get either their own as a consumer, get their stuff tested, or as a business, or as a collective, what's like the one thing that most people wouldn't know that they want to know when they're searching, when they're choosing a lab to get their stuff tested? What's something that most people wouldn't know that they probably should consider? Uh, I, I think the best, the, the first thing that you should always consider is are they a part of any other trade associations or organizations that are that are uh, collectively self-regulating? Like there's a thing called the uh, California Cannabis the California Cannabis Lab Industry. It's a, a NCI. I can't remember the initials right now. It's, it's a California uh, Cannabis Labs Association, whatever. But that's association made up so that all the labs can work together and. 
share that information, uh, be transparent about what they're doing, and then uh, educate the people that they work with to make sure that they're looking for certain things about labs, like, you know, what are their standards? You should be able to ask them questions about their standards. You should be able to ask, you should be able to go to your lab and say, hey, we want to we want to test you guys. Can you explain to us the best way to do that so we're going to get solid results back, so we're not going to blame you guys for something that's not real. And, you know, the lab should be able to say, here's how you want to do it. Uh, you know, you want to homogenize the sample, you want to use a lot more than you think you need. Maybe put it in a sterile container and then test us that way. But, um, I, I think you want a lab that's honest with you and doesn't get upset. The problem's not yours, you know. If a lab calls you and says something's wrong, the problem's yours, then they're probably not the right lab. You know, yeah. like, lab's position should typically be, if there's a problem, let's solve it together, whether it's yours or mine. Because I don't want to be doing bad business, I don't yeah. want to see you do bad work. Let's work together, and that's kind of what that is, And that's absolutely what I felt like, you know, I had one of my people, I'm starting to get all my stuff, having my vendors get it tested with you guys, and I called in for a question, and that was unequivocally my experience with Adam Mintz. It was amazing, and he, you know, he had time, and he made time, and, and he was just like, you know, when you're up here, come for a tour of the lab. It was just an incredible experience. So, you know, if people in collectives or individuals are, are looking to, to find the best testing and learn and work with the best people, where can they find you guys at? Make sure you say it loud. For sure, it's, uh, you can find us on, on the internet at steephillab.com, uh, and you can also find us on Facebook at Steve Hill Halen. Uh, laboratory and Twitter and Instagram as well. And I believe